Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mythology Monday. I'm your host, Alice Hanoff, and I'm going to talk to you about the next sorcerer line in my world of Torian, which is from my debut novel, The Head, the Heart, and the Air. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, it is available wherever books are sold, as well as Amazon, of course. And the paperbacks are out in August, while the ebook is out now, and is on Kindle Unlimited. So. Now that we've gone through eight of the ten lines in the world of Torian, we're going to talk about line number nine, which as you can see is the line of Mira. Now, the line of Mira is one of those lines that I took a lot of liberties with and was very creative about. So as you can guess by their line mark, which again is the tattoo that goes on their neck, this is the double mountain. So the line of Mira, their color is brown because they are the sorcerer line that deals with the earth. So they're more of the elemental magic type people and they deal with earth and moving of earth and things like that. Their dominant powers consist of, again, things with the earth. They can make earthquakes happen. They can take um, different like dirt and make it into things. So for example, if you heat specific types of dirt to make clay or to make bricks and that, they have the power to take that dirt, make it into bricks right in front of you without needing any kind of skill. They have the ability to move mountains, to drop mountains, to make paths through the earth when there's too much of a rocky terrain in that. They can make rocks move on their own. So anything that revolves around any kind of movement of landmass or earth, you've got your mirrors. They tend to be friends with the titans of Tira and Celtics because animals live on the earth, clearly they would be friends. And because Celtics use the earth to grow their plants, they tend to end up having pretty good relationships with each other. So where exactly did my line of Mira stem from? Now, for the world of Torian, Mira was one of the first lines that was there because they managed to rise the island of the Forbidden Lands out of the sea in order to make the world that all the sorcerers are currently living on. So they were one of the original ones that showed up on the island right when it began because they had to help create the island. The island was significantly smaller to begin with and they rose enough land in order to make the land bigger. Now, when I came up with this particular sorcerer line, when you're thinking of different types of magic that you want in your world. I did want to hit the elemental ones, so I did want someone that handled air, water, fire, like, and the earth as well. So Mira felt like a very important one, but there wasn't any kind of real mythology that dealt specifically with land mass and earth so much that I could find in the specific mythologies that I was reading and enjoying. So I took some liberties and this is the line that comes more from other things I've seen around different sorts of cultures or different movies. If, kind of thing. So the two biggest influences for me were, if you remember the story or the movie, The Never Ending Story, they had the rock crushers who would eat rocks. They were giant rock monsters or people essentially, and they would eat other rocks. So in my mind, the founder of the Mira line is related to those giant rock crushers. A more modern take on it would be, the think of the monsters from The Lord of the Rings, not The Lord of the Rings. Think of the monsters from Frozen 2, the big giant rock men who chase Anna and then end up knocking the dam down. That is another way that you could think of what I picture in my head when I'm picturing who founded the line of Mira. Now, because they are coming from essentially stone rock creatures, they are a very serious line. They come off very stoic. They don't show their emotions. They're always very serious looking as far as sorcerers go. They're also very, pardon the pun, grounded. And so they've got a good head on their shoulders. They think things through logically. They don't tend to overreact or get incredibly emotional about things for the most part. But they're also very strong physically because they do have a magic that works with physical landmass. They're not afraid to get physical in their daily lives and that. And so they actually are one of the strongest physically of the sorcerer lines and tend to be larger in size because they are stemming from rock monster type people. So I think the Mira sorcerer line is a lot of fun, despite the fact that their robe is an ugly brown color. But I mean, they're earth. What other color were they gonna have? So I hope you learned something fun here about my world of Torian. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that so you don't miss any of my book reviews or my Mythology Mondays. And I hope you guys have a great day and happy reading. See you next week.